The rapid transformation that took place in Colombo and its suburbs over the past few decades would have come as a change only a few would have imagined. Much thought would have to be paid if one was to vouch for having envisaged the magnitude to which Colombo has developed given the state it was in over four decades ago. However, in actual terms, its skyscrapers, flyovers, vast road networks and landscape backdrops do not reveal sustainable development for a modern city. This situation could be attributed to the numerous problems that have arisen in sequence in parallel to Colombo's accelerated development process. To date, the process has not been able to properly address the grievances of the city's underprivileged people living in slums amidst towering buildings and extravagant lifestyles. The underprivileged was seen as a stumbling block to the city's development and in most cases constructions were initiated at their expense. As a result, they began seeing development as a monster waiting to swallow up their dwellings to make way for the impending changes. This led to various conflicts. The new buildings reached sky high, but they were only provided with alternate land, congested, basic and bare minimum, thereby creating highly urbanized colonies with lesser facilities and sanitation. Even the slightest rain in the city had their homes flooded with overflowing drains. Imagine the health risks they face. Proper planning and well thought out strategies are of vital importance to develop these areas and uplift the living standards of these people. Development and welfare programs of any community would prove successful only with the support and contribution of those they target. Practical Action was well aware that it was easier to develop these areas by joining hands with the people and welfare institutions. With many years of experience, having worked with various communities and segments in villages to uplift their living standards, Practical Action introduced the Community Governance in Urban Administration Project as one such program. The objective of the project is to formulate well thought out plans and strategies for the development of underprivileged people. As a first step for the project initiation, a few areas were identified at Sri Jayavarthanapura and Vattala Mabole Urban Councils. They were Bandar Naikapura, Maligava Road, Obe Sekarapura and Gangodavila areas of the Jayavarthanapura Municipal Council and Duvavatta, Namaluyana, Uliamulla, Navaloka Udyanapura of the Vattala Mabole Urban Council. The social status of some of these people has hit rock bottom due to the socio-economic and environmental problems that arise day by day. Initially, they tried solving problems on their own. Now they have been invited to find those answers collectively. Providing these people with a forum to express and discuss their grievances was found to be the need of the hour. Even though it was a daunting task, we continue to establish people's committees and work with them in unison. During this period, our main objective was to build trust and gain experience while providing necessary services to the people. Members and officials of various councils connected to the subject willingly took part in these discussions. For the purpose of identifying problems and formulating plans, it was necessary to train a facilitating committee. Officials of the Divisional Secretariat connected to the subject through the Steering Institute were provided with training.
A team identified through the community was also handpicked for the task of formulating plans and strategies. When the process of identifying and analyzing the problems of people first began, only a few voiced their opinions at the forums. But before long, those who remained silent began coming out with their views and suggestions, enabling us to gain a comprehensive understanding of the problems the communities faced. The plans formulated in a more practical manner thereafter were presented to the community through the community-based organizations where the community's contribution was sought. Workshops and seminars were conducted for the community leaders while leadership training and participatory planning, accounting and capacity building were accorded priority among these. Providing the community with a clear understanding about the formulated plans minimized the conflicts that we would have possibly encountered. Working together, in the spirit of togetherness, was the solid foundation for the goodwill of these people. Creating awareness about proposed projects and seeking opinions from relevant officials also took place. The cordial relations maintained between members of the community and officials was a welcome sign. Various programs and workshops continue to be held to impart knowledge and necessary expertise to both parties. City development committees were set up under the Wattala Marbole Urban Council in order to develop the relationship between the community and officials and carry the views of the community to the administration. The City Development Committee, established under the Court de Municipal Council, has been recognized as the most successful committee in Sri Lanka so far. With a clear picture of the issues they faced, the stakeholders were called together where the plans were presented to them. It was the opinion of the people that the plans formulated were more accurate and practical. The committees are fully operational. Now it is time to implement the formulated plans by joining hands with the people and other institutions. The path to development is wide open. These smiling faces tell the story of that long journey.